Okay, guys, it's January the 17th, 2017. Um, I wanted to go over some scriptures uh, with you guys in relation to um, being accountable to the uh, to spreading the gospel of Christ and, um, you know, in ministry to others, uh, whether it be your workplace, internet, uh, at home, wherever, you know, you may be ministering. Um, there are some scriptures that I want to go over with you guys concerning this and um, some things that I have encountered lately and over the years with, with ministering to people and, and giving the truth to people, um, some things that you guys um, can understand in scripture and can consider when you are ministering. Um, first scripture I want to look at is Second Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to look at verse 14. Um, actually, I'm going to really look at this whole chapter here, but I'm going to point some key things in the Scripture out. Um, if we look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth. What we're seeing in the scripture is as children of, of God and, and as children of the kingdom, we know that the word um, is, is God's word is the truth. We live our lives by it. We speak it over our lives. And what God's, what's in the word of God is the truth that we live by as um as we take part in God's heavenly kingdom and we are um, heirs of Christ. Uh, to study yourself, um, thyself approved unto God, and a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth, basically means that we know the word of God. We study our shell, ourselves approved um, unto God by his word. We understand the word by the Holy Spirit, which teaches us all things and all truth. Um, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We are not ashamed when we go minister truth to people. We do it out of love. We do not do it to criticize um, or put that person down. We, we give them truth where we see truth is needed because there are very many out there that are deceived and do not understand the uh, word of God and do not understand the truth. The enemy has kept them um, very much so deceived. And so as heirs of Christ, um, God will send us forth and to minister to people and we will minister the truth to people. And um, it's always uh, really good to point out scripture, um, to back it up. And... Um, so we are not to apologize for giving anyone the truth. We are not to apologize for the word of God. Um, we, are, uh, we are rightly dividing the word of truth, which means we are giving them the word of truth, and we are not to be ashamed of that. Um, if these people get um, offended, um, if they say they get their feelings hurt or whatever, that... Um, then there needs to be some self-examination on their part. But um, as for us and the ministers of the Word of God, we are not to be ashamed and we are not to apologize. Um, but we are to stand with our heads high and right, and as righteousness of Christ and know that um, we are breaking or trying to break the veil of deception over that person and the spirits that are working around that person that keep them de deceived and keep the veil over their eyes. Um, so as we go through and we read more of this scripture, um, we're going to go down to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. So what that's trying to say is, is to avoid any controversies or anything controversial that you would think that would cause an argument or any kind of foolish controversy that it's just going to lead into one, you know, argument after another. As in, in Christ, we avoid that. All we, do, all we are accountable to is giving the truth 
and we do it in love. We plant the seed, and what and we really don't know. Um, speaking, um, you know, as with a seed, we don't know what the what kind of shape the soil is in that person that we are ministering to. In other words, we don't know. You know, that seed might not take place at the time that you are ministering to that person. It may not um, grow at that time, but it may come back to them later on. And um, um, But really, the only thing that we are to be accountable for is just, to, is just to plant the seed and move on. And as we know in Scripture, sometimes the seeds fall on a place where they grow, and sometimes they fall on a a barren place, um, and Scripture teaches you about, you know, the seeds that we sow. and um, But that is all we are to do in Christ when we are ministering to others is we sow the seed and we give the word, we give the truth. We do it in love, and uh, we move on. And uh, we must be gentle as the, you know, Second Timothy 2.24, and the servant of the Lord must not strive. We must not get into strife. But we be gentle unto all men. Um, we teach. We just appoint to teach. And we be patient. Um, in, me, um, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God pre-aventured, will, will give them a repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Who are taken captive by him at his will. So when we go to minister to these people, we know that somehow or another these people... Are, ca are caught up in the snare of the devil. They are deceived somehow, some way. Um, they may be baby Christians. They may be taught something that was wrong in a church that they go to, whatever the case. They are caught up in the snare of the devil. And the Lord, you know, we are accountable to listening to the Holy Spirit and to the Lord when we come unto these people to minister, um, to give them truth. Because um, we know that uh, there is a lot of deception out there. And there's a lot of people that do not know the Word of God. They do not know the truth. And um, people are get very offended. There's a lot of offense, which comes from the enemy as well. And they get into their own perceptions. And so um, most people at the time of ministry do not take the truth in because um, there's offense. And um, so we let God take it from there on out. And we don't get into strife with them and we don't argue, but we just give them the Word of God. Um, we tell them what Scripture says and um, we leave it at that. Um, and that is what uh, is required of us and that we need to be accountable for when we are ministering to people. Um, another Scripture that I want to go over with you guys as well is uh, is Isaiah 54 17 so it's chapter 54 um, verse 17 and um, these were scriptures that the Lord gave me this evening um, he was speaking to me through the Holy Spirit about these things um, that these were a lot of more things that I was going to come encounter with later on in the future, which um, is not going to be fun, but we know that it's part of ministering the gospel of Christ. So, all right, as we look at Isaiah 54, we're going to look at verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and our righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So we know that um, we have a demonic realm. We have a spiritual world. Um, we know that, the, uh, that Satan is like a roaring lion waiting to devour at any moment into uh, people's lives. Um, and here, um, Scripture says that no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Um, but it doesn't say the weapon's not going to be formed. It just says that no weapon that is formed will not prosper. So we know by this scripture that we're going to have battles. We're going to have demonic battles. We're going to, we're going to be in spiritual battles. Um, that's why God gives us the armor, okay, um, to prepare ourselves at all times. 
because uh, we're in a battle with Satan um, all the time. We, we pray for our children. We pray for our families. We pray for the ones that aren't saved. We are in a battle, and, and we're in intercession a lot, uh, almost all the time. Um, we can pray through the Spirit, or we can just, you know, knowingly pray things that we need that need to be prayed. And when we don't, we pray through our Spirit. But we are in an intercessory battle in the spiritual realm as, as heirs of Christ 24-7. Um, the weapons will be formed, but they're not going to prosper. We have the victory, and that is why it's important that we know the authority that we have against the enemy. We are not to ignore the spiritual world. We're not to, uh, we're not, to not talk about demons in the spiritual world. We are to talk about those things because that is, that is our battle, and that is why a lot of people are, are in bondage. Um, our enemy is Satan. It's not flesh and blood. It's Satan. And that takes me to another scripture that I want to go over with you guys as well. And um, that tells us what our battle, uh, our battle is. And it's in scripture. Um, and um, I want to go to Ephesians. And I'm going to go to chapter 6. And I'm going to go to verse 12. Okay, so we have Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places, which would be principalities. We know that principalities can lie, um, can hover above um, countries, cities, um, you know, they um, can be strongholds and can affect the people there. Um, and um, that, that is our battle. Our battle is not to wrestle against flesh and blood, but it is demons. It is the spirits of darkness of this world. Uh, it is our battle. And um, so we are going to come against these things. And the Lord knows that. Um, and so as we look in Ephesians 6, chapter, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that, you, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. We do fight against these things. We are not to ignore them. We are not to pretend like these things don't exist. God tells us to take our whole armor of God and to withstand um, and to do all that we, and when we've done all we can do, we just keep on standing. Um, that may be a, a, a situation you're praying about, intercessory for somebody's salvation, whatever it may be. We take up that whole armor of God, and um, which is truth, righteousness, um, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, um, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And um, we take all these things and we pray against the darkness of this world. We pray against Satan. We pray against these demons because that is our battle. We can have oppre oppressive spirits over us. We can have um, a spirit of lust attack us. We can have a spirit of, you know, anything. Um, if we stay in tune with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the one that tells us all things and all truth, and we pray, God will reveal to us what spirit um, we need to deal with. That's why we always need to, as it says in Ephesians 6, chapter eight, uh, verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. We always need to be praying in the spirit because it's the spirit that reveals to us our battle, what we need to overcome, what we need to get victory through. We need to be in tune with that spirit at all times. There is no fear in ministering to other people about demons and, and, and Satan because th that is the, the battle of this world. There are a lot of people in this world that do not know Jesus Christ. They do not know that, the, that Satan is their enemy. They do not know that demons affect them on a daily basis. They do not know that they have infirmities. They do not know that they may have a spirit of lust. They do not know they may have a spirit of perversion. So there is no fear in the Word of God. We are not to have a spirit of fear. We, we're teaching the truth. 
There's no fear in the truth and the Word of God. We are accountable to teach that truth. And there is no shame in that. And as you read in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So right there we see that we speak boldly in the truth and the word of God. We are ambassadors of Christ. We minister to other people. We speak these things boldly. We speak in love, and we speak out of truth, and we do what the Lord tells us to do according to Scripture as we minister, and we are not to be ashamed of that. We are accountable to that, and we, uh, as Scripture says, we speak boldly, and we make known to people the mysteries of the gospel, the things that they do not know, and the things that the enemy is keeping them deceived upon. That is what we minister um, to people and we do it without shame that is what we are accountable to and um, and God will bring you understanding to the things that you may not understand because God you know as it says in Ephesians 6 verse 22 who I have sent unto you for the same purpose that he might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts peace be to the brethren in love with faith from God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Um, God knows your heart. He knows the things that you're going through, and sometimes He will send people your way to minister to you. He will send someone to say, Hey, um, you know what? Um, I really sense from the Lord and from the Spirit. You're dealing with the spirit of oppression. Um, let me tell you what, the, what I'm getting from my spirit about what you need to do. Um, it happens all the time. That's how we minister to others. That's how we help others. That's how we open their eyes. We open them up to that, that realm that they cannot see. And um, that is what we are accountable to as heirs of Christ. And, um, and like I said, if someone gets offended or someone gets upset or someone says, you've hurt my feelings and, done, you know, then they are, then on their part, they need to do a self-examination of themselves because when we are in love and we are preaching the truth and the Word of God and it is Scripture, we are in the right. So um, I want to say to you guys, if that ever happens to you guys, then you, on your part, it, it's not on you anymore. It's on the other person. They need to do a self-examination um, of why they're feeling the way they do. Um, because you are being accountable to what you are supposed to do. And you are doing it in love and uh, the way that Jesus has spoken for us to do it in Scripture. So, um, therefore, that person needs to take a self-examination of themselves from that point on. Um, and because um, we know that uh, when we bring truth to people and there are spirits, um, the spirits that are blinding that person, they're going to attack. Um, they don't want that person to see. They don't want that person to know the truth. So they are going to counterattack you. Um, and that's when you have to listen to the Lord and say, okay, um, just walk away. You know, dust your feet off and walk away. Um, I've, you've done everything I've told you to do, and that's it. Um, and then from that point on, the Lord will deal with that person. And then, um, you know however they want to take the, you know, the, the seed that was given to them is up to them and, and the Lord. So um, I just wanted to go over this with you guys just briefly. I don't want to make this too long. Um, the Lord has had to minister to me. Um, I have gotten frustrated with a lot of people in the past and, and a lot of frustration um, when I'm trying to minister to people or give truth. Um, the devil will come right in um, and uh, try to uh, intercept something. So um, these are just some things I wanted to go over with you guys that the Lord has given to me to help me in ministering um, to others. And um, and not only that, but um, uh, the scriptures that he has given me to back it up. Um, I hope this helps you guys uh, to you know in ministering to other people. And um, I hope this, uh, these, I hope you guys will read over these scriptures 
um, and uh, you guys can understand just the same as um, I did. So I hope you guys are doing well. I'm always praying for you guys, um, as you know, and your families. And, um, you know, that um, I'll be right back on here again if I get something else from the Holy Spirit, guys. You guys uh, be well, and um, I'll talk to you soon.